Hello friends, welcome back to DevOps Seed. In this video, we are going to learn Linux directory structure. So in this video, we are going to cover how the files and folders are organized in Linux. So the file system here is standard, that means FHS defines the structure of the files system on Linux and other Unix like operating systems. And here I will use Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server to make you understand the directory structure. So let's start. So here you can see, here I have used tree command to list down the content of directory in like a tree format. So if you want to check the directory in tree format, then you can also install the tree in your system. So now we are going to install tree to check the format the, that our directory in like tree format. So here firstly, we need to switch to our root user. And now firstly, we need to update our system package. So run the command sudo apt update. So it's done, now clear the screen. And now run the command apt install tree. So you can see it's done, now clear the screen. And now we are going to check our a directory in tree format. So run the command tree hyphen capital L one space slash. So you can see our directory. So our first directory is root directory. You can see the slash, then bin, then boot, devs, etc, home, lib, lost, found, media, mnt, opt, and so on. So now we are going to check our directories one by one and we are going to check in these directory files one by one. So here you can see there is 23 directories. So now we are going to check one by one. So clear the screen. So let's check the first directory. So see a slash root directory. So the directory called root. So it is a starting point for the system Hirache. And note that this is not related to the root or super user account. Then the second is slash bin directory. So the bin directory contains the binary or executable programs and need to be used when performing system repairing, etc. For example, ELS, CP, CAT, ECO, DF, and etc. So let's check our bin directory. So here, if I run the command cd slash bin and run the ls command, so you can see the file of files in this bin directory. There is number of files you can see here. So you can see there is number of files in this directory. So you can check one by one if you want to check. Now clear the screen. And now the next directory is boot directory. So the boot directory contains loader files. So if I go to the boot directory, so you can see the loader files. So the boot directory contains the loader files. So you can see there is loader files. Then the next directory is dev directory. So the dev directory contains devices, files for all the hardware devices part of your system. So in this directory, you can see how it's contained your hardware devices files you can see here the files block full loop two three four five and so on so you can see here it contains devices files for all the hardware devices part of your system then the next directory is slash etc directory so the slash etc directory contains the system configuration files these files include username password network configuration application specific configuration system startup shutdown files and etc so let's check our etc directory so firstly we need to clear the screen and we need to inside our slash etc directory and if i run the command you can see the files in this directory username password configure network configuration application specific configuration so on so you can see uh, the host name and so on you can see uh, the number of files here password so you can see the files related to username 
पासवर्ड नेटवर्क कॉन्फ़िगरेशन एप्लीकेशन स्पेसिफिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन सिस्टम स्टार्टअप और शटडाउन फाइल्स हियर कैन सी देयर इज नंबर ऑफ फाइल्स इन दिस स्लैश etc डायरेक्टरी सो नाउ क्लियर द स्क्रीन now the next file is slash home directory so the home directory contains a home folder for each user for example if your user name is demo then you have a home folder located at slash home slash demo and the home folder contains the users data files and user specific configuration files each user only has right access to their own folder and must obtain evaluated permission to modify their files on the system so here if i go to my home directory then if i run the command ls so my username is ubuntu so you can see my username ubuntu and now here if i inside my username that means my ubuntu And run the command ls. So there is no file. So run the command ls hyphen la. So you can see here the files in my Ubuntu. Then now the next directory is lost plus found directory. So what's that? So the lost plus found directory is a construct used by the FSCK system utility. It's a special directory that contains data. That has become obsolete. The FSCK utility creates the or creates its own Linux machine with permission of the extended file system. So as of now, I don't have any data in lost plus found directory, but I'll show you the directory. Run the command cd slash lost plus found. So you can see as of now I don't have any data in this directory. Then the next directory is media directory. So the media directory contains sub directory where removable data devices insert into the computer are mounted. For example, when you insert a CD into your Linux system, a directory will automatically be created inside the slash media directory. But as of now, I have I haven't any insert CD. in my linux system so that's why there is no any data in, in media directory but i'll show the media directory you can see here there is empty there is no any data because i don't have insert any cd then the second uh, next is mnt directory so the mnt directory contains mount points for the temporary file system so you can check your mnt directory in your system You can see the main MNT directory contains mount points for the temporary file system. So the slash opt directory contains optional or third party software. That means dot zz file or, or zip files. So I don't have any files in my opt directory. I will show you slash op opt. You can see the empty. So here you can see. dot z or zz file otherwise a uh, zip file so you can check in your system then the next directory is proc directory so the what's the proc directory so the proc directory is a virtual and pseudo file system to contain information about the running process with a specific process id or pid under this directory the files and directory gets generated as and when your system start or something changes in your system So let's check the proc directory. cd slash proc. So you can see the files folders in this directory. So it says you can see here. It says under this directory the files and directory gets generated as and when system start or something changes on the system. So that's my proc directory. Then. the next directory is root directory so the root directory home directory for the root user so if i run the pwd command you can see a slash root that means we are in root directory right now okay then run directory so the run directory stores system process volatile runtime data so it stores system uh, runtime volatile data you can see the data folders and files then yes bin directory Slash yes bin. 
So the slash has been directory contains binary executable program for an administrator. For example, if this FSCK reboot shut down and IP tables. So if you want to check, then you can run the command cd slash yes bin directory sorry yes bin and ls command so you can see there is number of files in this directory you can see your ev tables and ip tables and shutdowns and so on files here so there is number of files in this directory you can see the shutdown so clear the screen now the like now the next directory is snap directory so the snap directory contains the mount points for your snap and several symlinks which are needed by snap. Here, if I run the ls command, you can see a snap. So go to this directory and run the ls command. So you can say there is file readme. So cat readme, that means we want to read this file. So you can see here the directory present install snap package so you can see the instruction for install snap package so that's the snap directory then sys directory so it's a virtual file system for modern linux distribution to store and allows modification for all devices connected to the system so you can check this directory and you can check the files one by one then the next is slash tmp directory so slash tmp directory contains temporary files these files are generated deleted whenever your system is restarted and may be deleted at any time by utilize such as tmp watch so here if i go to the cd slash tmp and run the ls command you can see the temporary files in my ubuntu server so that's just temporary files then user directory so what's the user directory so the user directory contains application libraries documents icons images and other files which needs to be shared by application and services and it is basically shareable read-only data so let's check so if i run the command cd slash user and run the command ls you can see here this bean game include bean lib32 lib64 libxc then lib x34 32 local yes being share and so on so this is you can see oh, there is libraries documents icons images and other files needs to be shared by application and services it is a basically shareable read-only data and now here if you want to check this directory in tree format then you can run the command tree hyphen capital l one space dot so you can see the same fold files same directories in root format sorry in tree format so you can say there is 12 directories so here also 12 directories so let's check these directories one by one you can see uh, the sub directories of user directory that's the sub directories of user directory so let's understand one by one so firstly include you can see uh, the include here after games so include standard include files then user lib that means lib so libraries for the binaries in user bin and user bin then user bin equal so alternative format libraries then user local it's contain local data specific to the law to the host and typically has further subdirectories then user bin no essential system binaries then user share architecture independent data then user source it's a source code so that's the sub directories of user directory then var directory so what's the var directory so var directory contains variable files such as log files log mail catch cache and temp files that changes constantly when the system is running and are expected to grow further so let's check our var file so you can see the log files 
बैकअप कैश क्रैश लीप लॉक लोकल लॉक लॉग मेल ओपीटी रन स्नैप स्पूल एंड टी एम पी सो दैट्स अवर वैर डिरेक्टरी सो ही वी आर गोइंग टू चेक सब डिरेक्टरीज ऑफ वैर डिरेक्टरी दैट मीन्स दैट बैकअप एंड ऑल सो फर्स्टली वैर कैश एप्लीकेशन कैश डेटा देन वैर लीप इट्स अ स्टेट इन्फॉर्मेशन प्रेसिडेंट डेटा मॉडिफाइ बाय प्रोग्राम एज दे रन then was the var lock lock files keeping track of resources currently in use then var log log files various various logs then mail mailbox files in something distribution these files may be located in the deprecate var spool mail then var slash opt that means this so that's the variable data from add on package that are stored in slash opt then run run time variable data this directory contains system information data describing the system since it was booted then spool spool task waiting to be processed then slash tmp temporary files to be preserved between reboot so that's our var var directory and there is sub directories of var so if you want to go to this directory so if i want to go to the lib and there is ls so you can see here this is the sub directories of lib so you can check one by one backup crash lib local and so on and then check the sub directories so you can check one by one so that's the linux dictionary structure so here in this video we have learned how to files and folders are organized in linux that means linux dictionary structure sorry linux directory structure so thank you for watching our video i hope you like the video and it's helpful to you so please like share and subscribe our devops in channel